Hello, my name is Rajesh Chandy, and I'd like to speak today about the concept of entrepreneurship, the nature of entrepreneurship, the drivers of entrepreneurship, and why all of us, entrepreneurs and employees alike, are important to the outcomes of entrepreneurship. Now, the Oxford English Dictionary defines an entrepreneur as a person who sets up a business, taking on risks in the hope of profit. Now, if I use the word entrepreneur, uh, if I say that word, who is the individual who comes immediately to mind? Who are some of these folks? Yeah. I've asked this question many times to many audiences, and typically the answers I get are, perhaps this is what you were thinking, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, and then a successful business owner from your own country, um, say Richard Branson or someone uh, of that ilk. Now, if I then ask you, which countries have the highest rates of entrepreneurship? That is, which countries have the highest rates of people who are their own bosses, the uh, who are self-employed? The typical answer I get is the United States, maybe Israel with its startup nations, uh, nation credentials, uh, Hong Kong with the dynamic trade um, that happens within. Now, rarely do people respond with the actual, the correct answer. It turns out, if, if you look at 2019 statistics on self-employment, i.e. people running their own businesses, um, the countries with the highest percentage of self-employed individuals are Burundi, Niger, Chad, Central African Republic, Guinea. Each of these countries has more than 90% of its population engaged in self-employment. In contrast, in the OECD country a list of, uh, of wealthy countries, the country with the lowest rate of self-employment entrepreneurship is the United States. About 6% of Americans are self-employed. In Hong Kong, it's about 8%. Israel, startup nation, 12%. Contrast that with upwards of 80% in many parts of the developing world. On, on a per capita basis, entrepreneurship is much higher in any bazaar, souk, village market in the developing world than in virtually any gathering uh, or meetup in Silicon Valley. Now, the drivers of entrepreneurship, therefore, uh, are also different depending on the type of entrepreneur we're discussing. Very often, we think of the entrepreneur as being driven by uh, opportunity driven by a, a vision uh, that no one else can see. In reality, entrepreneurship is far more often likely to be driven by necessity. And in fact, this is not just true in uh, the developing world. As time gets, uh, times get tougher, entrepreneurship goes higher. So as the world in recent months has seen uh, a series of negative shocks, the rates of entrepreneurship, I'm sure we will discover as, as the months go along and the statistics, the statistics keep rolling in, um, will have gone up as well. But the reality is entrepreneurship too often is synonymous with poverty. It is synonymous with having few opportunities. It is less likely to be about hope or at least too often, uh, it is about humiliation. It is about the daily frustrations of trying to eke out a living. Perhaps the individual who best encapsulates this reality of entrepreneurship is Mohammed Bouazizi, the Tunisian street vendor, uh, who was so frustrated by his inability uh, to sell or, or make a living um, and the daily, daily humiliations he faced um, trying to sell fruits and vegetables on the street, that he doused himself with 
petrol and set himself on fire. That was in 2010. And the effects of his action, many argue, um, are visible to this day. Now, they led in, very, in, a, in a somewhat direct line to much of the tumult that came in the Arab world with the Arab Spring. Now, even if the, the reality is not as desperate um, as some of those cases, such as with Mohammed uh, Bouazizi, it is the case that entrepreneurs, if, no matter where they are, but especially in the developing world, where most of the world's entrepreneurs live, face extraordinary constraints. They, cons they face constraints around rules, the rule of law, for example, um, and having access to, um, to property rights, access to money, collateral to borrow, skills, basic business skills, or indeed the kind of human capital, as the economists call it, uh, education um, and, uh, and, the, uh, and the exposure that uh, they might have that might allow them um, to, to fulfill their dreams more effectively or create businesses that could grow. And access to information, where information about who the right customers are, where the competitors are, where technological and other possibilities exist, is unavailable to many of the world's entrepreneurs. I remember um, interviewing uh, grocery store owners in, in a slum in Cairo uh, and discovering that about a third in our sample of grocery store uh, owners in Cairo had never been outside their own slum. And if you asked um, these entrepreneurs, um, who are your customers? They would look out and they, point, they would point to others on that street. Who are your competitors? It would be that person and that person and that person who's also selling a seemingly identical set of products and services, uh, grocery stores. So the reality um, of entrepreneurship is, is that it is too often filled with constraints. Now, again, uh, this is not unique to uh, the developing world. Uh, the management theorist Peter Drucker pointed out entrepreneurship is risky because few entrepreneurs know what they are doing. The good news, however, is that the winds of change are blowing. Many, in many cases, these changes are these winds of change are driven by technology and uh, indeed by entrepreneurs and innovators. And this is offering many new possibilities. In, in just about a week, um, I'll be starting a new course at, at London Business School with some colleagues where our students, um, MBA students at London Business School will be consulting with entrepreneurs in um, very distant parts of the world, in Rwanda and Uganda and Nigeria and elsewhere, learning about um, the opportunities and the constraints they face, and in the process, um, hopefully communicating ideas in both directions. This would not have been possible just a few years ago, where you can get on a, a, a software program that connects you instantly uh, and generally without too much trouble uh, to an entrepreneur or an individual far away uh, and, and to be able to connect with, learn from, uh, and, and uh, help each other uh, in this task of, of entrepreneurship is a possibility that did not e exist just a few years ago. Uh, later this month, I'll be doing a roundtable uh, involving uh, several others, uh, large corporations, um, large uh, businesses, um, large um, government entities, uh, as well as several villagers uh, from rural India um, who, will, who will tell us about the reality of, of how the pandemic is, is affecting their lives and the constraints and, and challenges they face, and indeed the opportunities. Mobile money is making uh, possibilities, that, uh, making things possible. In fact, the ability to access funds from the famous three Fs, friends, family, and fools, uh, you could do so at the touch of a button these days, whether you live in Kenya or Rwanda or many other parts of the world. And so as we think about uh, entrepreneurship, we have to recognize the differences uh, between the, those very few who are able to harness these winds of change. And most of us 
who would be far better off as employees than as entrepreneurs. And we have to salute those who are able to create jobs. They are rare. They live through these very same winds of change as we do, but they're able to harness them far better than we are. We should salute those who create the environment that allows the entrepreneurs to flourish. The innovators, the mentors, the rule creators, the role models, the financiers, the teachers. We should be grateful for the jobs we have and the opportunity we have individually or collectively to nudge our employers to build an enabling environment. Warren Buffett, the American financier, said many years ago that we can sit in the shade because someone else planted a tree a long time ago. We should, be, we should salute the many who are fighting difficult odds to fulfill their dreams and lead lives of dignity. These are the invisible entrepreneurs, even though they number in the hundreds of millions. They're not as well known as Bill Gates or Richard Branson or Elon Musk or Steve Jobs, but their success matters to them, to their community, and to us all. Thank you.